Eastern's El Costo uh, advanced city. I have to say that this meeting was not really called for councillors. It really is a meeting for community leaders. Another meeting will be called where we will have the representatives of the people, the councillors, interacting with, um, with uh, community leaders. But this meeting is an initial meeting um, for community leaders so that we can interact. And coming out of this, we will have a framework that will allow councillors at the next one, because remember I said, this is an initial meeting and the beginning of a conversation that we hope that will go on forever, um, regardless of who's sitting in the chair. I know the mayor indicated to me that she really wanted to be at this meeting, but I received a note that she has had an emergency. She's still hoping to come. I know she really would like to be here because there's some things that she, she, you know, she wishes to say to community leaders. And all day yesterday, we were talking about this meeting. She wanted to come, but um, I just received a note where she has an emergency, and, and I'm hoping that she probably would still be able to run. And I know that she will be very annoyed with herself um, if she can't get to come, even at the last part of this meeting. Um, and then you write about the, from the, from waste to energy, and Mano asked Narayan to take two minutes and to speak on that. Um, I know that we've had certain proposals, but of course, um, our laws are slightly different, and you have to go through, not only the council, but you have to go through EPA, you have to go through a whole host of other agencies, which are not within our curtilage, and uh, the certain processes that are not within our control. So you would know that we, even as a city, would not be able to make that decision by ourselves. We would need to uh, consult with other people. As we've had the, the, the situation with the parking meters, you would know. And the other one is the, um, you're quite right about the derelict vehicles, and I'm going to take that suggestion on board, because that is one we can handle easily, where we can use the stickers, and I'm going to take that and you're going to see it happening, where we're going to use various notices um, with respect to derelict vehicles, and we're going to move to have those vehicles go away. Um, the only problem with that though is that once we start doing that, we would have to keep them and store them because as you know, the scrap metal uh, trade has not yet been fully opened and there's still some problems with that. So it becomes a question of storage. How are we going to store it? But I'm sure we'll be able to find a way. And um, there was another point that you raised. Um, the buildings, yes, with respect to the derelict buildings, ruinous buildings, again there are certain laws which prevent us from doing exactly what you said. Some of those cities, they have, their laws are structured in such a way that they can call a sale in the next three days for a building. We can't do that, and that is why I said earlier in my remarks that some property owners are taking advantage of the system, and because they know that we can't sell a building overnight, they're not paying their rates, and they're burning their buildings, and they, and they, you know, they, I can point to a number of buildings that we, we, we have done work. So I've contracted people to clean up, to weed, as recent as last week, to clean up, to weed, to pick up. We attach it to the, uh, to, the, to, the, uh, to the account of the owner, but obviously you can't find the owner, so you can't get the money. And so they continue doing this. Some neighbors will tell you that they, in their own interest and in the interest of safety, some neighbors will tell you they pay to weed lands that don't really belong to them. But just because they want to be secure, for the sake of their children, for their general neighborhood, they would pay money out of their own pockets, out of their own purses, to get another man's land clean up, who really has no interest. But we will pursue um, some course, and I'll discuss it with the councillor, some course, to see what we can do to, uh, to fast track an arrangement that would allow us to perhaps put up some of these buildings for sale outside of the usual thing that is in the law, if we can have something, maybe a bylaw or something dealing with that. And now that you've brought it to my mind, perhaps it will be a good thing for us to explore. And I'm going to talk with our legal people, putting in place a bylaw that will allow the council to move in that particular direction. Because it is a burden on the city, both economically and in terms of its image, it is a burden in the city when absentee landlords travel and stay or stay forever in other countries while the buildings are left and the properties are left abandoned.